This model is pending and it's one I made recently. It has gone through Vroid Studios to Unity to Blender Do uh, Unity again. Let's uh let's jump into this. Uh, when I started this I made sure I had everything planned out as far as like the design, like the character design, the outfits, and all this other shit. Um, and pending is a boy but is a young boy so I went with a female body because I wanted to have like uh, the adjustment over the face that you can with the females where the male bodies you don't really have that. Um, and I had talked to him about it and he was fine with it. Um, because it's kind of very young. I was inspired by Nagise from Free, uh, as far as, like, how I wanted, like, the shading on this to go and how, like, I wanted, like, his character to look, like, young and stuff, you know? Uh, that being said, like, it's not unheard of to... whatever. <clears throat> uh, so, um... Uh... While doing this, since he has two forms with two different color eyes, I figured the easiest way to do it would be to just make the eye gray, and then I would just do an overlay of the different colors and switch them. As you can see here, I'm seeing what it looked like with red and then blue, because those are going to be the two colors we'll switch between. Um, and ultimately, like, it's also why I did some of the hair the way I did, but I digress. Uh, I just thought this would kind of overall be easier. And, you know, it worked. It, it looks good. I like it. I should let you know that a lot of these techniques I used in here I used on my coffee model. Um, but since I, didn't <laughs> since I didn't record that, I wanted to retry all the techniques here, uh, except it's a little bit more involved. I did have a little bit more knowledge, although surprisingly I did have an issue at one point with something that I was able to do in the coffee model but didn't work in this model, so I went back and I found a way to fix it, sort of. I don't know. I'll explain. Um, like, if you have an issue, this is what I did to fix it. Um, and a lot of these techniques I have learned, um, some of them through trial and error. Some of them through other tutorials. Uh, some were friends who tried to explain it to me <laughs> multiple times. Um, but you know. So since uh, this is a two models in one, two characters in one, there's two different hairstyles, and uh, so we're both gonna, we're gonna have to make both the hairstyles um, on the character at the same time. But in order to do it, you do one at a time. So I do one and then you turn everything off and then you'll do the next one after. Um, I still was on the fence about the hair color. I was kind of thinking like a blonde, but then ultimately decided to go with a gray. Because he has like a white silver hair now. So I figured to kind of keep that. And even when I did the demon form, I still kind of kept it just more of a gray. Yeah. But he had seen the designs beforehand. Like... He, he knew what to expect, in a sense. So yeah, as you've seen, I turned all the angel hair off, and now I'm working on the demon hair. And then I'll turn them both on at the same time. And this is, like, an idea I had for a while. And you can actually apply this to just a model with just the hair, if you wanted two different hairstyles. You just have to make sure that each hairstyle was had its own, like, hair material. Uh, so that way you can turn them on and off in uh, Unity. Um, so, you know, if you want an updo, or if you want, like, your hair down, or if you want, like, um, a pompadour, like, I don't really need <laughs> You just do them all at the same time, and you just make sure they're each, even if they're the exact same looking texture, you just have to have it as a different material, uh, and that way you can just turn that particular material on and off. Also, I ended up making a halo here in Vroid, and it would have worked just fine, except I was dumb and used the same texture for the halo as I did for a drool accessory that the character has that I'll put on later on. Pending had asked about having a, um, uh, a character that has, like, a hungry drool on the face, and so I figured, um, I would use hair. But I was kind of dumb, and I didn't give it its own texture. 
but I hadn't realized that until after I had already sent it through Unity and then Blender, and then I was like, I, <laughs> I was almost done with this thing when I realized my mistake, and I was like, I am not redoing all that work. Now granted, this was like the bulk of it trying to prepare and doing all the texture work, um, but overall the whole thing took somewhere between 15 to 20 hours. Um, yeah. I hear you guys a little drool. So I didn't really want to have to redo that. Although granted, some of it I wouldn't have had to have redone, but, you know, it's still a lot of work and I just... I found a workaround, which was make the drool and the halo in Blender, which I know enough Blender to be able to handle that and that's the extent. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, so each of these characters have uh, their own wings, and I'm not sure why, but I put them on the same layer. I think I just kind of want them to line up. Um, also, wings are a pain in the ass to do. Feathered wings? Because the, flipping them doesn't always work. And this here is going to be the demon wings. And the wings that I use here um, are just placeholder wings. Um, I retexture them later on to kind of match. Uh, but I made these for another model um, that I have up on booth. But since I was going with the same design anyways, I figured it would be fine just to kind of use it as like a placeholder. It also really helps when you're boning these, like for the two different hairstyles, to turn one off and just do one at a time. And then once you're done, turn off the ones you've already done and then do the other one and then turn them all back on. Uh, and I needed that little uh, dangly bit in the middle to hold his halo up, but it was going to be transparent. Um, and over here it's just making uh, the textures for the clothes. Uh, the jacket is actually going to be overlaid on top of the demon jacket. Uh, so when I finally do it, like normally you would adjust it when you're in Blender so they don't overlap. But in my case they do overlap, but it's okay. Because uh, they were only going to be turned on one at a time. They weren't, they, we didn't need them at the same time, you know. Alright, and this is just like kind of trying it on and seeing what I like and don't like. Like, I had had the general idea of what they were going to look like, the outfits, but, you know, sometimes you just got to mess around and figure out what, what, you, what you're looking for. Also, when I do texture work, I tend to have a movie on in the background. Um, so every once in a while, I'll just kind of stop and pay attention to the movie. So if you ever see me like halt for like a moment, that's probably what I'm doing is like looking at the movie that I'm watching or listening to. Um, and I don't think I did that too much here. And honestly, I think the shoes I did right here in... Uh, v -roid just because of these particular loafers are pain in the ass. And I wanted both of them, uh, the demon form and the angel form, to use the same loafers. But I figured I'd make the demon forms just solid black so I didn't have to do much except change the color later on when they decide to switch outfits. And if you didn't know, I use um, the default textures to kind of help me place where wrinkles and stuff are supposed to go. I just don't do it as drastically as they do because my designs are more simple. Yeah.
I decided that I was going to do, um, like, these type of pants for the demon form because I didn't want the same shorts for the demon form as I had for the angel form, which I initially did in, uh, the design. Uh, so later on, I'm gonna have to switch skin textures, uh, in order for them to, uh, change forms or else you would see these pants underneath the angel and I didn't want that. Um... Uh, but I could have also just done a separate material and just imported that in. Um, but at this point, like, once I have it all done, I make sure the hairs turn on for both of them. And then I, uh, turn off the tail, the extra jacket, and the wings, and I'm just going to export this. Uh, my problem is I didn't export it with the without the stuff the hair combined like I, I exported it with them combined and it shouldn't have been which is why I wasn't able to like uh, fix the drool thing and I had to make my own Now we're going to apply the blend shapes in here first. Um, and Hana Tool has recently updated so it can now do 13.1 uh, Vroid blend shapes. Uh, which is the good news. The bad news is this Vroid also updated to 13.2 which doesn't allow these blend shapes to work on it because... <sighs> Vroid, can you just please add a button so we can export with all these fucking like real sync, perfect sync? Ra. Anyways, uh, when I tried to use the 13.1 with uh, the 13.2 model with the 13.1, Hana Tool didn't work, so I had to go download the 13.1, which I went to the website to do, um, and then re-exported it and imported it here. Um, now I do this first before taking over Blender because sometimes Blender like messes some things up, and I might not have been able to do this afterwards. Uh, so this is the only Unity editing I'm doing before I touch Blender. Um, alright, so after I get, like, all of the blend shapes set up and export it, uh, I need to export the accessories from Vroid Studio. So what I'm going to do is turn off everything that I don't plan on exporting. Um, and that's all of the textures. Uh, I want them all gone. And if it shows up on the body as like just a grid, just add a new layer, a blank layer. So this is the eyes, the eyebrows, the eye lines, all of it. All of it. You're just going to see a, like a blackhead floating and that's, that's freaking fine, man. Um, now I'm going to just like do each accessory individual and then when I go to export, it's going to go to a uh, polygon reduction and then reduce transparent meshes, I think it's called. Uh, and then you're going to see everything disappear, but you'll have the XDIs, but we'll get rid of them later. And I'm going to save this as a, uh, VRM and I name each one accordingly, like tail, angel wings, demon wings. Uh, now I'm going to do the angel wings, uh... I'll then do the demon wings, and then we'll also do the angel jacket. Yeah. And this is kind of like the tedious middleman step. And I guess you could have done this after exporting the model. I mean, you can do this pretty much in any order as long as you have the stuff to do it in. Anyways, so you're going to need um, uh, two packs installed in here, and one is going to be Cat's Blender, and the other one's going to be uh, VRM and Porter. Yeah. And I'm using Blender like 2.9, maybe 1, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I couldn't find the, the thing. I'm sure it's somewhere. I'm, I'm just dumb. All right, so you go into, like, properties, and then you can, like, install, and it's just going to show you that, like, this thing to pop up and you just find the zip file but you don't unzip these things you know it's fine it unzips itself so then you just click what you want and then you hit install you make sure that it's checked and then you just kind of close it out and it should appear over in like your toolbar on the side all right that being said let's uh open up uh import vrm and we're going to start with the tail now 
let me tell you something, okay? When I did the this technique for coffee, it worked just fucking fine. When I did it for this model, it had a fucking issue. I don't know what the issue is, per se. Um, but either way, I'm going to tell you how I fix it afterwards. So first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of all these goddamn colliders. Um, so I'm in the object mode and I'm just going to right click and delete. And then over here, uh, everything below that says hair 001, so it should be hairs, and then it should say all these like bones. We're going to delete all those too. So just select it, right click and delete. And you can just like select and shift and select all and you know, delete. Um, and make sure you get the secondary too. Don't, don't leave that shit. Yep. And the, the face. We don't need the face. We, we just really want the tail. Um, so now we're going to need to delete the uh, armature that's here. So select the armature and then go over to edit mode, which is over the top drop down right there. Um, and then I just like select it and then I just hit delete on my keyboard and delete bones. And then you just scroll wheel in to kind of like see what you want and then just move it over, you know, click delete. And delete. <clears throat> and I'm basically going to do this for the whole armature. And delete. And now we just have a goddamn tail. Perfect. Um, so at this point... Hold on. I'm going to pause right here. Alright, look. Look. Two things I should have done at this point, or at least one thing I should have done at this point is... You see where it says hair 001? Uh, if you double click that, you can rename your armature. You can rename it from hair 001 to uh, tail, which is what I suggest doing. Double click it for tail. And then we'll open it up. You should also see something that says hair 001.baked. Double click that and name it to tail.baked. Or whatever the fuck it is. If it's wings, if it's tail, if it's a big toe, I don't know. I don't care what the fuck it is. Name it what it is because it'll make it easier for you after the fact. Uh, yep, let's go. <laughs> All right, so I, I went into object mode and um, I, I select the armature again. I don't know. And then I open up the cat's tool over here and you can kind of, uh, you know, see the cat's tool. Also, if you click on like um, uh, viewpoint display, you can click in front and then the armature will show up on the uh, in front of it. Right? Right. So uh, now what you're going to do is... You click on it and then you click start pose mode. And now you can like move and pose your uh, items, which is what I did for Coffee's wings. So they move when she talks and like for his tail, it moves just a little bit. And basically you're going to move to where you want it. And then you're going to um, do pose to shape key. And once you do a type, name's going to come up and it's going to want you to like name your new lens shape. Um, and then when you're done, you can hit stop pose and it'll reset it. Which is usually what, you know, I did. And then, you know, you just go through and um, make a new pose and a uh, new blend shape. And you just keep making as many as you want. Um, I didn't make too many. I just made a few. I wasn't looking to overdo anything. Uh, but really, it's on you how you want to do this. I don't really fucking care. Um, yeah. Tail down. <laughs> you can see me right in the corner. I really wish it tracked the, the mouse. I spent like an hour trying to find a program to do that. I could had no no goddamn luck. It I did my best, you guys, okay? <sighs> Alright, well so you get the general idea. Let's kind of jump ahead a little bit. Now if you want to kind of check your blend shapes, um, if you click on, well, so Mine says like hair 001, but you know, you're, you're going to want to click on the um, uh, like upside down triangle thing and it's going to see the blend shapes and you can use uh, the slider there to kind of see it move and how it looks. And you can also adjust it from there, which we'll see when I do the wings, which I'm going to do those next. But once you're done with uh, your... Uh, Blend shapes, you can export this as an FBX. But anyways, um, so I forgot to mention last time that when I uh, started, I deleted the lights and camera because I don't really want them. 
Uh, I'll do something else to the um, when I'm importing them later on. But for the most part, we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the last one, and that's delete the um, colliders, and we're going to delete all this like hair that we're not using. Again, I should have renamed uh, hair 001 because it got a little confusing when I brought it into Unity and I had three hair 001s. <laughs> Which may have been, like, the reason for my issue, but I, I don't know. Um, speaking of, uh, let me talk to you about uh, an issue I had. So when I had originally brought these into Unity, um, I did the same thing I did for, like, Coffee's Wings. Um, I wasn't able to export it if I used any of the blend shapes from this. Um, I then had to go back in and delete the vertex groups and the modifiers before it let me do it. And I don't really understand why, but... Um, also, in this one, I'm currently adjusting where I want these, um, uh, the armature. So I just grab a point I want, and then I just hit G to move it to where I want it to on the wings. Because, you know, sometimes it's not exactly where you want, because this was designed for hair, not goddamn wings. But yeah, it was just, like, adjusted slightly, you know, where you want it. Um, and you can even, like, split bones too, which I did later on, but you're gonna have to, um kind of re-weight the bones. Yeah, and I just do automatic weights because I'm fucking lazy and... Um, and for this one I do the same thing. I start to, um... Uh, adjust the different blend shapes, I do that and then I can export it. Alright, at this point when I'm checking out the uh, blend shapes, because I noticed when I was doing them, some of them looked a little weird. Like, you can see how like a little jank a couple of those wings are. Because again, this was hair, it's not meant to do this. So what I did is I uh, had it up at 1, uh, the value at 1, and then I go over into edit mode, and then I'm just going to move the vertices to where I uh, want them. So like over here you can see like this is kind of pulled off, so I just grab it and then I hit like G to move it. And I try to make it look okay-ish. You could probably do better to make it look good, perfect, or whatever, but for the most part I just... I just didn't, I don't know. It was, I did enough to where it looked fine. And like this one, I'm having trouble getting it because it like went inside. So I used like the uh, wire mode in order to grab it. And then I hit the C button, which allows you to kind of select. Why? I don't fucking know. And then I just select which one I want. I uh, right click to get out of that mode, the C mode. And then I just hit G to move it. And then I repeat and do the same thing over and over again. There's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know how. I'm, I'm about to start to learn Live 2D again because I only know Cubism 3 and I just got Cubism 4 and I want to learn it for animation purposes, not for VTubing rigging purposes, although I suppose I could. But, anyways, uh, so this tedious part of just moving things around to get it to where, or how you like it, you know? Uh, so yeah. Alright, once I get it to where I think I like it, I go back into object mode, and then I just kind of test this out again to see how I like it. And it's, uh, it's, it's fine for me. It's good enough for me, you know? Is it perfect? No. Do you have an issue that it's not perfect? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I give no shits whatsoever. Um, I've literally saw someone uh, post online about how my my viewers are to t are terrible, and I'm like, and of course they use the example of a viroid I made in 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, all right, get the fuck out of here. Anyways, um, yeah. So pretty much. 
Uh, that's another wing down. And, you know, I deleted and I'm going to do the, the third wing. And you should probably save. I didn't save between any of those. For me, this part, I wasn't really, like, whatever. I didn't care. All right, so, uh, you, you know this. We got to get rid of all this shit. Again, you should have named your stuff. I didn't name my stuff. Maybe that was my issue again. I saw, now I, I kind of wonder if that was the issue. I don't know. I guess I could go back in and try it and see if that's actually the issue because I didn't really... De deleting the modifiers kind of like messed up another thing I wanted to do, but eh. You know what? It is what it is, and as long as I was able to export it, because trust me, I spent like two days trying to export the goddamn thing, and I could not figure out why. Since I applied literally so much onto the damn thing, and its error message made not a lick of sense. Um, and I even had someone who is a game dev look at it, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> But I did my best. Alright, so for this one, I don't really like where these things are placed, and I wanted to add a couple more bones. So we're gonna do we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna show you that. Um so you know, I G to move it to kind of where you want some of these bones to be. Um Yeah. So we're just gonna kinda move these around. You select which one you want and you move it. Uh, again, I'm in edit mode after selecting the armature. Um just gonna line it up. And at this point I'm thinking I kinda want this divided in half, like that big long one. I guess I could leave it really, but I don't know. I, I'm needy and like I wanted it a certain way. Um and if I didn't have it curved like that, I probably would have just left it like that. But ultimately, like, I wanted to uh do it. I, I wanted to like split those bones up. So um, I select what I, I the one I want. And I hit W. Um, in edit mode and right click and do subdivide. I think that's how you do it. I don't know. That's how I did it. And then I grabbed the uh, point I, I wanted to move and I moved it to uh, like where I wanted it on the wings to kind of have like that a little bit of curve. You know. So at this point I'm in object mode and I select the wing and then shift select on the armature. And then I do control P in order to parent um, the object. Uh, and it should work. Yeah, so you can see it's kind of working here. Um, so uh, you parent with uh, automatic weights. I'm sorry. I kind of forgot that. Yeah. Uh, and now you can kind of move all these around and it should all be kind of where it thinks it belongs to. And there's a way that you can kind of adjust it. Um, but this was good enough for what I was looking to do. Um, and now at this point I'm just making uh, my blend shapes, my shape keys again. Um, in here they're called shape keys, blend shapes, shape keys, whatever, the same thing. Um, so yeah, uh, and then I'm gonna just go through this and, uh, do that. And of course, once you're done, you just, um, export as FBX. We learned about three things in this one, which was, um, making shape keys, um, how to adjust your shape keys or just adjust the meshes on a shape key if it's all fucked up. And how to repair bones or split bones and all that other shit. I don't know.
And I import my, uh, the jacket first, the one I'm not going to use first, because I want to get rid of the armature. I want to get rid of basically everything. Uh, also get rid of the camera and lighting. We don't need that shit. Uh, so I get rid of the armature. Just, just not, you know, just right click delete. Just get rid of that shit. The face we're going to get rid of. Just fucking get rid of it. Delete. Secondary. We're going to get rid of. Hairs we're going to get rid of. Just delete. Delete, delete. Um, and then we have the body, which we could rename to Jacket or Angel or whatever. And you should always rename your shit. So I won't use the same ones. It's terrible. Um, so we're going to do a couple of things on here. First, we're going to clean up these goddamn edges. Look at these jagged edges. It's fine. But we can clean them up. So we're going to just select the jacket and go into edit mode. And at this point, I just click outside of the area in order to deselect. And then I hit C, which will allow you to select the things. And I select the points that I want to get rid of. I uh, right mouse button to uh, get out of that mode. And then I just hit delete. And I do the same thing for the other goddamn side. I hit um, C. And then I select what I want. And then I right click to deselect to D out of the select tool, and then um, uh, delete the, the things. Yeah, so when I hit delete here, you can see how a chunk of that uh, thing went away. And I just, uh, you know, undo, control Z, and then I made sure not to uh, mess with these two. Cause like there, you can see I moved it around and you can see exactly how, like, how funky it was. Uh, keep in mind that the reason I didn't voiceover while working on this, which is what I usually do during tutorials, is because I spent uh, somewhere between 15 to 20 hours on this, and oh my god. <laughs> it just, it just no. Anyways, I go through and clean up my edges um, the best of my ability because, you know, make it look good, man. Why not? It'll just take a few extra minutes. It's fine. So at this point, uh, we're going to have to adjust these uh, ver vertices groups for yes, uh, vertex groups, vertex groups. So if you uh, click on it and then click on the uh, little upside down triangle, you're going to see all these uh, groups, right? And wait, you're going to need to be in um, I want to say edit mode. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to select on one and hit, um, like select, right? And that's going to show you everything that that's attached to on that particular bone. So for example, on the hip bone, by hitting select, you can see that all this is selected. And if I want something that's uh, not attached on there, I just hit C and then I select the extras and then I assign it to that bone. And then once I'm done and I'm happy with it, I uh, lock it in place. If I want to remove something from it, like here, I hit C and then I use uh, the middle mouse button to deselect things I don't want selected. Uh, and then, um, well, I deselect everything that I want to stay there. So like these parts here, I didn't want there. So what I did is I left those selected and then I did remove from that particular bone. Um, so it might be a little confusing here, but what I'm basically going through is each one and uh, adjusting uh, where I want things to attach. So like this is upper chest. I don't... Is that upper chest? Yeah, so this is upper chest. So what I did is I deselected all of the actual upper chest. So anything that was on the arms, uh, I kept highlighted and then I hit remove. So it was no longer attached to the upper chest. Um, also, I selected all of the neck piece and then I assigned it to the upper chest because I'm going to eventually remove that from the head so it doesn't deform when the head is moving. And then once I'm satisfied with, you know, I can hit select or deselect. Um, if I hit select, I can see everything that's selected on that bone or yeah, on that joint. Um, and it lets, lets me know like, yeah, that's good. That's this, this works. This is fine. Um, and then I lock it. 
So this is the neck one, and don't mind, I accidentally hit the wrong button. Um, and I am just, you know, just, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother with this one, because I'm going to end up deleting it. Um, I rem end up removing it, and, uh, because I don't want it, like, attached to the neck at all, or the head. And I gotta make sure I lock everyone's, all the ones that I want. Yeah, and you see how this is on the head? You know how, like, when you move your head about, sometimes it deforms a little bit? Uh, like, collars and stuff? Makes it a bit of a pain. This is a way to kind of fix that if you're, uh, want to bring it out over into Blender. Um, I had to do this with Mel's work. This was explained to me a few times by Obsidian, who learned it from Jeffy, I want to say. Um, yeah, it was such a pain in the ass to do, to learn. <laughs> um, but basically I'm doing all this now because when I add in my model, I don't want to have to worry about my model being in the way. Um, also I recommend saving. I think I saved after I got all this situated, but I go through each and every one of these um, to the different parts of it. Also, like the bottom of the jacket, I didn't want bending with the legs, so I detached it from the legs as well. Um, so it was only coming off the hips. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna kind of speed through this a little bit. All right, now we're going to um, import VRM and we're going to import like the pending VRM that we had already done the blend shapes on. Uh, remember to do those first because it might mess up. Uh, now I'm going to select the um, Angel Jacket um, and I'm going to just scale it up a little bit so it's a little bit bigger because I kind of wanted it more oversized. Um, and if you're doing this for your own model and you just want layered clothes and you're not doing like the, the flipping between things, uh, what you're going to want to do is um, adjust meshes accordingly. Like when I did coffee is one of the uh, schoolgirls, um, the sleeves showed through the haori sleeves. So I had to go in and adjust the mesh on that. Um, or you can just erase it and you don't have to worry about it. But since I wanted the jacket to be able to come on and off, then you know, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, and again, like for this one, I wanted it very bulky. I wanted it like big and flowy and whatever. And I didn't care if it clipped through. Like I honestly didn't care because we were going to get rid of, um, we're only gonna use one at a time. So for me, it wasn't a big deal. Once you get everything uh, situated to where you want it to be, what you're going to want to do is go into object mode and then you're going to select the the jacket uh, and anything else that you want to attach to the body. Make sure you select the body last. So you're going to, uh, you know, grab it and then you're going to shift click um, the, the body um, and then you're going to hit uh, control J to join the two. So it's going to merge them together. And once you join them, you can't undo this. So all right, so uh, you gra grab the bones, go into pose mode, and then if you grab it, you can hit R to kind of rotate and just see that it's moving with the body, and that's good. Um, and then you just kind of like right click out and it should reset it. Um, and you can uh, test the different areas to make sure things aren't attached to where you don't want them attached. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for like layering clothes and attaching it for this particular thing or even adjusting like um having things like morph weirdly like that hand morphed a little weird with the um sleeve but i actually i'm okay with that um so at this point you know i just go back into object mode and then i export the vrm and uh yeah we are ready to move into the uh, final uh, stage, the final Unity stage, where we apply all this bullshit together.
I've imported the pending with his new jacket on there. I have created a folder and I call it FBX Mayhem. And in here, I have added um, all of my X FBX models, which includes the wings, the tails. Uh, there's a couple of extra things he wanted, such as um, the drool, the cookie, which I had mentioned in the first one that the halo and the drool kind of came out a little weird. And I didn't learn about that until after the first time I went through all the Unity shit, but I didn't want to have to go through all that blender shit again. So, yeah. Um, I just decided to make a halo in Blender and the drool in Blender and F exported that as an FBX. And then I also made materials for each and every one, which is, you just, um, you know, right, right click and you can just do materials. Um, yeah, so here you can see all the different materials I have. Um, and I made sure they're all using like the VRM, uh, tune shader because I want them all to kind of match. Uh, now, when you click on uh, one of these uh, FBX, you're going to want to make sure that the camera and the light are off, and uh, the um, uh, wed verti vertices is deselected, and then the legacy blend shapes are selected. Um, and then you're going to go over to the materials, and you're going to select this little button. And mind you, I'm I was in the prefab when I did all this. Um, and then you select the material you want and you hit apply and then all that shit applies to it. So, yeah, Gucci. Um, and I'm gonna do that for all of these. Um, and then you apply and then you have, like, your textures on your thing. Yeah. Uh, but make sure, you know, all of the, the settings are the same and the right. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to make a, a new one, you just go uh, right click create materials and you just, you know, you have the material here. Uh, you can just select the little button and select the material you want. Like, granted, this is not. Whatever, this is just showing you. Uh, BRM, Mtune. And the, the reason I'm showing you here is because I started redoing the whole thing without recording. And so I figured I would go through and just kind of show you how I did it real quick. And there, that's how we made a material. Um. And then you can change, like, the transparency and the colors and all that other shit. It doesn't matter. Anyways. Uh, and that's shading. You know how to do this shit, right? Yeah, I hope so. I'm tired. Um, we don't need that one, so we're just gonna delete it. Yeah, delete it forever. Goodbye. Um, yeah, so these are all the things we're gonna be adding, plus two extra things. Alright, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I have pending in the hierarchy. I'm gonna right-click and do open, um, the prefab. And now I'm going to apply everything, everywhere, and what have you. <clears throat> so the first thing I do is I just kind of grab and I drop it to where I want it. So like the tail I dropped into the hip. Now it's up here, so you're going to use um, uh, like the toolbar in order to move things around. You know, there's move, rotate, and scale. And I use all of them for these. Um, but yeah, this is going to seem a little tedious, but... Eh. Also, I turned off the jacket so I could see where the tail attaches because I cannot, for the life of me, see where it's supposed to go in because it's supposed to go right where that opening is by the tushy. Yep. And this is another way of getting out of having to transfer the hair. Um, but you know, it's fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna add, like, you know, the other stuff in. So, like, for the halo, uh, it already had bones in it, so I, I basically, I, um, decide to, uh, turn the halo that I have transparent, because it's attached to the drool and I need both of those gone. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the new halo that I created 
on the same bones that the other one was on. So I find where uh, the bone is, uh, which I think is either at the very top or at the bottom. What am I doing? Oh, I know. I end up saving a lot during this because of issues I had. Alright, so now I'm just kind of like checking to make sure I find the right bone and I can see that this is where the halo is and then I just drag and drop it um, right there. And then I adjust it and now this is actually attached to the end of where uh, the Vroid halo was. Also, because I was having so many issues with the previous two times, uh, I end up saving a lot throughout this just to make sure that I can still export it. And so that's why, how I will know when I done fucked up. So I'm like, oh, it was this step that did it. And then I uh, look at this step and figure out why, which actually helped because like this, uh, what I'm uh, putting in here is this lovely model by Wrinkle, which uh, Pending had purchased before. And it looks a lot like his, like, hamster in real life. But every time I would apply it, I could not get the goddamn thing to export. And I found out later, like, there were two issues. One, something with the shaders was messed up that it wanted to use. And I could not, um... Even if I deleted the shaders and, like, applied a new shader to the material, or even made a new material for it, it still kept looking for those shaders. Uh, and I don't know why. And another thing was, is that... It had two materials, and one of the materials had a, um... I was to put it on my shoulder, I thought it'd be cute, but... I thought it would get lost in the other jacket. Anyways, um... The, the other one had two materials, it had it for a gray hamster, and like the brown hamster, and his hamster's brown. Uh, so I used that one, but apparently they used a Photoshop file as the material. And it doesn't export, but I did not realize it because I just used theirs. Ultimately, what I, I had to do is I had to take the FBX out of the Unity package. And like, look, you guys don't need to know any of this. Oh, I'm just going to rant while this goes on because, yeah, at this point, like, I try to save it and you see it doesn't work. But anyway, so I ended up ripping the, um, the model out of the Unity package through Blender and re-exported it as an FBX just for, like, the sake. You can see all the, the error rate on there. And then I um, took the, the texture and I remade the texture uh, on a new file. And that's how I was able to get the damn thing in eventually. It was the last thing I actually got figured out. Um, but I, I deleted it for, for at this point and I just kind of, you know, moved on. Um, also, if you get these errors at the bottom... You can kind of click on them and a menu will pop up. They'll tell you the error and you can get on the details about it. And usually it kind of gives you an idea. Um, and you can clear it out at the top. You can just be like, clear. And then you don't have to look at the error anymore. Uh, and this is me also reinstalling. <laughs> look, wait, you know what? I spent a lot of time on this fucking hamster. We're just going to like skip. And uh, after five minutes of fucking with that goddamn hamster, I gave up and uh, decided we were going to add the drool uh, to the head. Um, yep, yeah, that's that's uh, a drool I made. I'm proud of it. Uh, not. It's stupid. I've made better things in <laughs> Blender. Uh, yeah, so anyways, at this point it's mostly just, it, while in the prefab, I'm just adjusting and getting things to where they need to be. I'm making sure that they're on the right, um, area in the hierarchy, like, things that are attached to the head should be attached to the head, things that are attached to the back should be attached to the back, and so on. So I'm gonna kinda, like, speed us along on this, alright? Zoop, 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 zoop! All right, now, um, at this point, there's two effects that this thing is going to have. One of them is going to be attached to the head, which is going to help give dread. Um, 
and the other one is attached to the foot. And what I do is I right click and I do create new and I think it is like 3D material or 3D object and then I do plane. Um, and yes. Uh, and then I apply my material on it and then I position it where I want because these are going to be flat things. Uh, so we have like a dread that's going to go over the eyes for when he's feeling like dread because I didn't add it in with the hair because with everything else on here, uh, of course I forgot something. Um, which the sad part is is that the hair can bend, this cannot bend, so it does kind of float a little bit, but you know. <laughs> it still it still gives it uh, the same uh, effect. It's fine. Um, so I just kind of like pull that in. Um, and I will also do this for a few other things uh, later on. So, you know, if, if you ever want to add a couple effects that you can't, like either you want them flat or you just need a bigger space or you forget, you know, you could probably just add a plane, a 3D plane and... Uh, apply it that way. Uh, and I also rename it to Dread because of course it's, you know, it's for when he makes his Dread face like, uh. uh now I'm doing another one and I'm going to attach it to the foot. Um, and this is called Cookie Rain. Uh, Pending really loves cookies and all the cookies and cookies, cookies, because who the fuck doesn't love cookies, right? Um, yeah, so we just do another plane and this one is going to be I'm gonna actually make this twice. Two of the exact same things. Um, and I'm attaching it to the foot because we don't move our feet too much when we're in uh, Vroid. It'll move a little bit, but I usually I kind of, you know, I don't know. You can probably just attach it wherever. But I, I attach it there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is give it the uh, cookie rain. Um, material which I realized as soon as I made a new material that I already had the cookie rain material um and then I just kind of deleted it look look it was a lot to, to remember and go through um yeah so I just kind of grab and drop this into the element and I have already made cookie rain move as you've I have a tutorial on how to make textures move so go check that one out if you you care um and uh, so I, I just named it like Cookie Rain and it's kind of behind pending. And then I duplicate it and I put it on the other foot, which I, man, it doesn't really matter where the fuck it is to be fair. Um, and this one is going to be for the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it forward and I'm gonna increase the size just a little bit. Now, both of these textures are moving at the exact same speed, looking the exact same way, but because one's slightly bigger, they look like uh, they're moving differently. And yeah. So that way, if he wants cookies to rain down upon him, or if his chat does, they can trigger that and it would be great. Yay. <laughs> It's just something fun because, you know, the cookies. Like, he's got a cookie in his mouth. It's sort of like how coffee has a uh, toast in her mouth. Coffee can make um, feathers fall down around her if she wants. Uh, it's the same for this one. Um, yep. And then I, like, kick it out of the prefab. And, you know, I'm still saving. I'm making sure that everything is uh, exportable. And as we can see, that things are still exporting, which is good news. Good news bears right here. Um, now at this point, there's a couple of things we need to, to do before we're done with this, which is turning blend shapes on and off, turning materials on and off, adjusting materials and so on and so forth. And saving your goddamn project. My autosave failed at one point, so yeah. Um, oh, also, uh, in the uh, secondary, being that pending is a boy, there is this uh, bust thing which kind of gives, uh, you know, a little j jiggle physics. Uh, I delete it. Uh, pending doesn't need jiggle physics. Pending is a boy. And, uh, you know, I pulled the breaths in small, but there'd still be a little bit there because for some reason, you know, <coughs> it wants to. Um... Now, 
since I had to re-add in these wings, I, I wasn't able to add new spring bones, which I tried. Uh, but if you want to, this is how you would do it. Basically, you just, um, you would look for VRM spring bone script. Um, my comment is usually what I'm working on. Um, and this is how, this is how it would work normally. And this is how it worked for coffee. It didn't work for pending. I don't know why. This is the one thing I couldn't figure out. Um, but either way, so what you do is like for the tail over in like the root bones, you select how many you need, like for the tail, you need one. Um, and then you're going to just grab under the armature and you're just going to drag and drop it in. And you can do the root for the center. You don't need to. I don't think you need to, but yeah. Um, and then you can adjust like the stiffness and the gravity. And that's like uh, all those sliders you use in uh, Vroid Studios. It's basically those. Uh, for the wings that there's uh, two um, uh, root bones. So uh, on this one, we're going to uh, dial in two. And you can see under like the uh, armature, you have these two root bones. Um, again, like they didn't work for this. I don't know why. Um, it actually worked in the, the broken ones where I wasn't able to export it. But in this one, I got rid of, um, uh, I want to say the arm, was it the armature? Modifiers? I think it was the modifier. I think I got rid of the modifiers or something and that fucked it up. Look, I don't, I don't know. I don't know 3D modeling too well. I know just the basics to kind of get by and I just kind of like do my best and then I share my knowledge that I've learned by fucking poking things with sticks and seeing what moves. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at in this. Um, all right. So, um, I'm going to go over into like, um, blend ships and, um, Usually the third one in uh, will show you the entire list because it's just blend shapes. The other ones are like blend shape, blend shape A, blend shape angry, and then it's just blend shapes. So you got to find the ones just called blend shapes, right? Um, now before we we go too far into that, I'm gonna have to turn some of these off because get <laughs> them. So yeah, you, you, I've done this before. You just click, uh, you know, slide this down. So like the cookie, the drool the um cookie rain because that's really getting fucking annoying the dread you know and you have to have it on cutout or transparent or transparent z white or else it's not going to work um i don't know what that little point is but i i think i fix it later on um yeah so at this point we're going to go uh back over into blend shapes and when we, uh, all right, we're going to pop this out, I guess, real quick, yeah. So you can also see it right there, how you have the face thing, and then you have hair, one, two, hair, hair, hair. Yeah. Yeah. So those allow you to adjust, um, the movement of each of those. And so that's why I'm keeping the demon wings on and the angel wings on right now, so I can see the movement that it does. Uh, yeah. And if for some reason you can't, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to go through uh, quickly and I'm going to adjust all these blend shapes. Alright, so, so let's just kind of like zoom, 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 zoom. So at this point, I'm just going to be turning off all of the um, demon stuff. So we're just going to do angel stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm all, Oh, I'm also going to show you um, how to do the skin All right, um, so we're, you know, we're gonna turn off like demon jacket and we're going to, uh, so like the body skin we have, um, I'm gonna show you how I do this real quick. So what I do is I open up this particular texture over um, in Clip Studio Paint. I oh, use Photoshop, you use whatever art program you want really. And what I do is I layer them, it and the original angel body next to each other in one big long file. And I'm going to show you an example here because I forgot to record it. 
Um, but yeah, you can see it, so it's like this, and then I make sure I save it over the exact same file name. Um, and then we're going to adjust, like, UV coordinates. I do not recommend this for the face. Um, and like here you can see, like, uh, how part of, like, the leg texture is somewhere else. But, uh, 0.5 aligns it to the angel side, so the shadows are in the right place. Um, you can actually add, like, a bunch to it, but... It's a bit of a pain in the ass, and I don't particularly like it, and it also sometimes gets a little screwy. I've done it before um, with outfit switching on the fly, but it's often glitched, especially in VC face, and I don't, I don't know why. So, um, I, I made sure to keep it only at the legs, only like on the body, so you see very little of it. Also, when you're adjusting those blend shapes in VC face, make sure you have it set to zero, for the switch or else you're gonna see it just slide across the body um it's how i did like some of my eyes and like uh you can see like uh like the eye highlights slide across my eyes yeah it's switching its its position its coordinates yeah anyways <clears throat> so again I, i'm just going through and i'm renaming things as well as i go along so like Demon hair, angel hair, red, blue, uh, horns, because there's a lot of hairs in here and it could get really confusing. So if you have them all renamed to something else, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, so that's pretty much what I'm doing. It's just kind of organizing some shit. Um, so then when I need to turn it on later on, it, I can. Meow. All right, now we're just angel pending because all the other stuff got turned off. Uh, oh, also over here, I changed the color of the eye to a blue. Remember how before I mentioned that I wanted two different color eyes, that's why I left it gray. This is why I left it gray, blue. Um, and the eyebrows are good as they are; they're going to change for the demon form. Yeah. All right. Um, and just double checking, make sure everything's looking Gucci. And then I go over into the blend shapes and then I create um, a new blend shape and it's gonna be um, Demon Form. This one's going to require a lot of stuff for the Demon Form, but there's also a couple of other blend shapes I'm doing, such as like um, Hungry and Dread. And I think I do like a flap and a wrap and cookie and cookie rain and then there is the hamster later on so <laughs> so there's a lot of added blend shapes um but you know yay um so like for this one cookie rain i just you know i go over to the materials list i look through my list of all the goodies i find cookie rain i change the color i go uh full alpha and then white and then if you look you can kind of see it on the screen gucci uh for cookies it's the same thing it's a it's the cookie in the mouth it you know it's just take that material color make it white transparent you know the alpha all the way up <clears throat> and now there's a cookie in the mouth and so on and so forth and we're just going to kind of speed through a little bit all right now we come to the demon form which is going to be kind of tedious because we got to turn everything off and then turn all the other parts back on um so i i think i start with everything to turn off first minus the skin like the skin i'm going to change the coordinates and these coordinates i always have a little bit of like hard time um trying to figure out where they are like I don't know I it, it's one of those things I have trouble like wrapping my mind around uh, just because of like the tiling and the offset like I know in theory where it should be but usually I just kind of punch around with 0.5 and ones and whatever ultimately since the original one the angel one was 0.5 just doing a negative 5 for because you know it moved the, the point over negative I was trying to figure out if there was a way to do it without putting a negative number, but I guess not. And, you know, we got the pants, finally. Finally, Argama! Get your shit together! <laughs> um, 
And like uh, at this point, we're going to uh, also change the eye color. I don't know why it went fucking green, but uh, we're going to change it to a demony red Gucci. Uh, oh, and the shoes. I think I changed everything I needed to have color changes. I changed first, if I remembered, and then slowly went down. So at this point, like, I'm getting rid of, uh, the top, the jacket, uh, I'm gonna get rid of the shorts, um, and so if you click plus, it does what the previous one was, which was color and turned off, so made it a little easier, uh, at least turning everything off. Turning it on was a little bit more of a problem, because for some reason it kept, like, defaulting colors to weird things, so. But, so we have, um, the, the hair, the second highlight color, the uh, angel wings, the uh, halo, and then we got to turn things on. So we have like the demon hair, which has a darker gray. We have um, the uh, red, if I'm, or, I'm, or the brow. I'm, I'm sorry. We did the brow because I forgot the brow is changing its color. And um, the red, which apparently I added the red in post. <laughs> so you know you just change the color in it. And the wings. We don't want it on red. And the tail. And the jacket. And we're almost there. And I gotta get those horns in. And now we have the demon form. So uh, all the other stuff will turn off and all these will turn on and they all happen at the same time. Yeah. Um, and depending on if you use VC face, like the delay, it'll show like how fast it'll end up switching. Um, one other thing I did for this one, since this is like demon form, I lowered the eyes a little bit to slightly angry. Uh, just to kind of, you know, Whatever. Give it that little... <clears throat> nah. Um, I want to do it with the brows too, but I would really need to rotate those and that's not something I have the ability to do via ya. Yeah. So yeah, so you have like the angel form and then you'll just have like the demon form. And all the expressions carried over to the other one. Uh, because you're going to have it like toggle on and stay on, not just to hold. Uh, so yeah, now I save and I export. And ultimately, I uh, ended up with this. Um, I, I adjusted the uh, halo a few times um, as far as how I wanted it to move. Uh, some of the times it was like super like just floaty. Like at one point I'd turn my head and like the halo would just wander off somewhere, which was kind of funny. <laughs> um, but I figured this was better and it was kind of more jiggly. Um, later on, afterwards, I did go back in and I was able to finally put the dot goddamn hamster on the head with all the stuff I had mentioned before. Um, but yeah, so it, it quickly just switches forms, which is really great and it's super fucking cute. Um, and I have like wing blend shapes, which I think I added in after, which I didn't record. Uh, cause I had sent this off and I was like, hey, this is what I got. I'm going to add a couple more things in later on, but like I needed a